Hello and good afternoon. Welcome to this uh, latest uh, webinar series by Exchange for Media and Sales Sports on a Tuesday afternoon on a day when India has scripted a historic win in Australia. So congratulations to everyone who is excited about the win. Uh, I have a fantastic set of panelists uh, with me today who represent a very wide uh, sector of industries of Indian businesses. This webinar, as you know, has been uh, curated along with Salesforce. And we are uh, today going to uh, talk about redefining marketing moments and building personalized experiences. Uh, brand building has been increasingly about personalized experiences over the last few years. And the COVID, uh, the pandemic has really uh, put a new uh, found spotlight uh, on, on this. Uh, let me uh, introduce my panelists before we start the conversation. We have on the panel Ajay Dhani, Head Marketing and E-Commerce for the Timex Group. We have Christopher Jacob, Senior Director, uh, Director Product Marketing Salesforce. Also joining us today is Deepti Sampath, Vice President, Marketing and Ancillary for Vistara. We have Kishore Mardikar, Chief Marketing Officer, Tata Klee. Nate <coughs> Kumar, Vice President, Marketing for Maruti Suzuki. We have Pavush Alavia, Head Digital Marketing, Z5. And Vivek Sabarwal, Head Marketing and PR, Aero Club, Woodland. And I am, I am the host, Naval Ahuja from Exchange for Media. Thank you, uh, Deepthi and gentlemen, for joining us. I Thank hope you. you all have an insightful conversation. Let me get the ball rolling straight off the bat. Uh, let me ask you, now that uh, 2020 is behind us, for the wide width of brands uh, you guys uh, manage, tell us two, three key learnings that uh, you've, uh, you've uh, come across uh, due to COVID. And when I say learnings, tell us consumer habits, consumer insights that you've gathered which you thought have uh, the pandemic brought in and which are likely to stay beyond uh, 2020. Why don't we start with uh, with Mahesh? Sure. Uh, so, okay. So the pandemic brought one thing for sure that budgets uh, got slashed straight away. So that brought in uh, you know, a lot of uh, innovation to be done uh, the way we reach out to the customers. Uh, apart from, of course, we all have seen uh, uh, that uh, more and more customers, of course, the physical uh, world was off for a quite a long time. So how, how do we reach out to customers? Uh, our one-on-one uh, -on -one marketing, our uh, digitization, our, our ability to uh, you know, have our customers' database intact helped us a lot in, in those times. And uh, so to say, of course, after we even, uh, you know, sort of came back to action, this trend uh, continued. And uh, there, there was a shift in uh, the consumer uh, uh, buying profile, uh, which also happened uh, due to pandemic, the, the kind of people who, who uh, went in to purchase uh, the products. So Mahesh, tell us what are the key things, uh, what are the two, three things that you see uh, the pandem pandemic leaving behind for good? As a marketer, what is what are the things that you will, uh, you think uh, would stay with us, would have changed forever uh, when it came to say a sector like auto? Uh, okay, if uh, I have to talk from purely marketing point of view, I think a few things to remain there is uh, the, the, the innovations that were carried out in terms of optimizations, optimizations in, in how do we market, how do we reach out to customers, uh, the way we used uh, you know, analytics and uh, uh, our, our provision analytics to reach out to the right customers uh, through right medium at the right time. Uh, these are the things which we sort of uh, worked upon in this time and, and they are going to remain uh, uh, for the times to come. And of course, uh, we have to improve much further in the coming times. Uh. Let me hop across to Ajay. Ajay, uh, Timex has been a brand that's been around for a while. And uh, uh, this category also was deeply impacted because a lot of the sales were also driven by physical retail stores. Right. So you use this time to kind of uh, uh, give an input as to your digital strategy. But as a marketer, what are the things that you see that uh, the pandemic has changed for good as far as your category is concerned? What are the things that now you require to do differently in the future forever? Uh, right. So starting with the pandemic time, when we had uh, this uh, lockdown starting across India, 
So Timex is mainly an offline driven brand. So we have presence across various markets through different formats of stores. So lockdown was a difficult period for the brand and it was not very, very clear to everyone how things are going to move up and how things will shape up in the coming times. But one thing out of this COVID situation, which we have you know, noticed in a very, very positive manner is the digital adaptation of uh, amongst the consumers uh, to buy watches online. So, so we, we saw the consumers coming online, buying from uh, e-commerce platforms as well as from the brand websites. So we saw that number of consumers who are willing to buy online, maybe uh, not only from uh, the tier one metro towns, but from the smaller cities also. So the digital adoption rate amongst the consumers was um, uh, greatly motivated. Second thing which we noticed out of this uh, behavior is that you know the way we looked at the consumer aspiration. So we looked at consumers from different uh, uh, perspective, like from the different angle, the way we were present in different formats of stores, the way we presented our catalogs to the consumers. And out of this uh, COVID situation, we also uh, monitored that you know there is a large aspiration amongst the consumers uh, to buy some of our global marquee products, which are a little expensive than our you know, uh, normal price products in India. But out of this COVID, we saw a lot of consumers coming to our brand websites asking for those uh, flagship products. And that is one very, very positive thing for us as a marketeer to understand our consumers in a very different way. Like, you know, we have been, you know, observing our consumers uh, like we do in a traditional retail format. But with the digital coming into the picture, the way we looked at the consumers completely changed our perception. So that was another positive point out of this uh, COVID situation uh, for us as a marketeer. Right. I think very relevant points and I'm going to come back to you on that. Let me just uh, now go to DP. Uh, DP, obviously airlines were, uh, airlines and the tourism sector has been one of the hardest hit. Things are now uh, thankfully getting back to normalcy. Uh, and airline as a business has been of knowing the customer well. For almost five months, uh, if I'm not mistaken, there were hardly any aircraft in the air and then people have started flying again. There is one part which is uh, which is safety and uh, hygiene that people are bothered about, and hopefully those things will not remain a concern a uh, few, few months down the line. Beyond that, what are the other interesting things you picked up? Uh, change in consumer uh, behavior uh, when they approach a booking, when they uh, kind of uh, choose an airline. What have uh, you guys picked up at Vistara, which you believe are though they are a result of the pandemic, but which are likely to stay way beyond the COVID. Yeah, sure. So you're right. Uh, I think, um, you know, knowing the customer has been uh, something that is key to an airline anyways, uh, because, you know, we, we collect the data at the point of booking. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, we are also really, really directed by the government on many mandates that we have to follow. So uh, safety, hygiene, et cetera, of course, is, is something that, that came about. But along with that also came things like signing forms, uh, you know, uh, web check-in, et cetera. So there is, there is a behavior change. There is a consumer behavior change that has happened over time. We see a lot of web check-ins now compared to what we were seeing earlier. So from a marketing perspective, we had to put a lot of those in place in the sense that there is a government mandate. Uh, mandate was there to sign a form uh, that had to be integrated. So, you know, it was, everything was done digitally. So that is a big, big shift. The other shift is in the consumer mindset is that if, if you look at when you want to travel, you want to see the timings, the affairs, et cetera, that probably took a back seat because you're now concerned about safety, the hygiene, which, which airline is following all the protocol, which airline will be safer. So all of that came into play. So there is a shift in how you are, uh, you know, how the consumer is now thinking of air travel. What are the priorities, top priorities that have become when you book? And also how we as an airline are able to instill the confidence as a brand, instill the confidence in, in the consumer's mindset. So that is what changed. And, and I think that we tried to build that across all our platforms. Yeah, I think a uh, very important point, especially when it comes to the airline business. In fact, I'm going to quote from the, uh, you know, as you know, Salesforce uh, recently unveiled their state of marketing report. Uh, where they covered a lot of uh, brands and CMOs and a lot of them, 78% uh, of uh, the CMOs said that last year's crisis should be used as a catalyst for improvement. Correct. Airline is one good example. And I'm sure, I mean, Vistara is, uh, I'm sure you were following a lot of protocols and a lot of uh, 
regulations even earlier but it's also an opportunity for other airlines to come up and use this as an opportunity to make sure that they meet the importantly the required standards and are able to instill uh, confidence of the of the uh, of the of their consumers let me uh, go across to christopher uh, christopher as you know is part of salesforce and christopher you uh, you guys deal with the uh, brands across multi sector so uh, it's not possible of course to go through uh, you know insights into each sectors each sector but tell us uh, highlights from some of the key sectors things that you picked up working with these clients closely what has changed uh, for a cmo in terms of what consumers are doing and uh, how that has changed the cmo's life going forward firstly thank you nawal for having me and thank you um everyone for joining and hi to my esteemed panelists um uh, it's a great question um i think you know we you've heard some individual examples of what's changed with interactions between customers and travel and and for things like buying consumer products like watches we at salesforce sort of sit in a in a unique position obviously we are a company so we have customers many of which are hopefully on this call um but we also provide a platform uh, that other customers use to interact with their customers and because of that and because of my specific role at salesforce a lot of which you uh commented on i see a lot of those macro trends in terms of what's going on with general digital transformation as well as end transformation that's going on through research that we do between brands and customers so just to give you one thing to start off with like globally 63% of end customers and buyers so whether it's b2c or b2b businesses say how they uh, receive their goods and services has transformed just since the beginning of 2020 so within 12 months 63% that number jumps to 93% when you're talking about india alone 93% Now we heard some individual examples just say with the experience with travel with check-in and 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 buying products but can you imagine a transformation in human history when 93% of people say how they did something just 12 months ago has changed just 12 months ago I'm talking about some ma- rapid things so if you think about that type of a rapid transformation in such a short space of time and all of us brands and the industries that we are, represent and the markets that we sell into that's a massive amount of change that we need to adopt a massive amount of understanding of the customer that we need to uh, achieve and then when we go out and do something as as tactical say as marketing when you actually go market to that person whether it's the channel you market in or the message that you're sending within that channel that fundamentally has to be transformed not just because they may want something different than else but also because the context has changed you have to be more empathetic we're in an era where you have to be more empathetic we we people may have lost their job people may be going through health crises you do not want to be hitting them with over powered products services or types of offers that may be insensitive to that information and you want to hit them in a channel that they may be more likely to interact in covid if anything else has accelerated the uh transformation that's happening at brands in fact 71% of customers in India say that they expect brands to increase their digital transformation because of covid so they already wanted it but now they're saying they want it to increase so there are a couple of the macro trends that we've seen that you know we individually are experiencing as a company but i'm sure everyone is experiencing and feeling it yeah i think the very relevant point uh, what covid has done has accelerated trends uh, that were already kind of uh, happening it has uh, given a fresh impetus things that might have taken another 3 5 years have happened in 12 months uh, uh, but the important thing uh, to uh, learn here or understand here is uh, that when something gets accelerated at such a fast rate there is some significant fundamental change also that takes place it's like you know how india went from a very low telephone density country to a mobile phone uh, country without you know going through the curve of you know landline phones or a huge penetration of landline phones and today you see uh, mobiles uh, mobile penetration is in, in this country is huge and content consumption on mobiles digital transaction has gone up and every brand is now scrambling around to figure out you know what to do yesterday i was chatting with mark reed the global ceo of wpp and one of the key things he said was that uh, uh, digital naturally is now a way of life for most of the Uh, consumers but what what is important for brands uh, and marketers to understand 
is that uh, not to uh, look at digital as uh, only a medium of reach out digital has to be looked at in its entirety how you are approaching the consumer and the some of the old rules of marketing still remain relevant uh, like you said for brands to be empathetic whether you know you're doing the transaction or you're seeking the customer to come to you offline or online empathy is something that uh, is a value that people will seek from brands uh, anyway let me hop across to kishore uh, kishore you are part of a company uh, that has lot of physical brands but tata click specifically is a digital only brand and uh, it's a it's a online retailer e-commerce company uh, covid uh, naturally would have really accelerated uh, what tata clicks you know growth journey but tell us some of the key things you saw have transaction values gone up uh, are customers spending more time researching before they are buying what are the key things you picked up which are also going to be very relevant for you to build the next uh, sort of uh, growth uh, foundation in fact uh, now uh, i am actually continuing the discussion what uh, christopher actually left and what you spoke about uh, very very clearly for us uh, being a digital brand we actually were witnessing a decent amount of exploration happening earlier on multiple categories but the moment the covid started at the moment there was a lockdown the amount of exploration actually uh, exponentially went up. there were large number of categories which to a large extent were not known for exploration we actually suddenly saw people coming there looking at multiple products comparing products and actually that led to a need for us to generate content which can be consumed in what we call i want to know moment because generally for an e-commerce platform if you actually look at it there are two parts of the customer journey i want to shop where the customer actually comes with an intent and shop but there are a large number of customers who come just to browse just to understand more just to take certain decisions that part of the journey actually accelerated we found large number of categories where customers actually started spending more time started comparing more brands comparing more products and that is why actually we spent a decent amount of time during pandemic to actually make sure that uh, content is generated where customers actually can start the journey they can compare they can understand we actually brought a number of experts those experts actually held up creating the comment so that at least there is a point of view which the customer start getting because what as a marketer what uh, our objective is to get that particular customer make the purchase on our platform as well which means the positive disposition to sale happens and that is where the content played a very very important role so the point answer is exploration exploration exponentially went up and that is what as all the e-commerce brands did we had to make sure that we give enough and more information to the customer because digital was the only way in which they can actually start their journey physical stores were no longer i'm going to come back uh, regarding this physical and the online uh, store synchronization uh, a bit later let me uh, go to vivek vivek uh, woodland uh, has been around for a while and uh, so you started your journey as a you know physical offline brand i'm sure uh, an online strategy is also work for woodland mm-hmm. uh, tell us uh, and you know again outdoor was all shut and woodland has been a brand synonymous with outdoor so mm-hmm. for many months uh, people were hardly outdoor how did you survive that and what are the learnings that came out of that uh, sort of tough period the period was certainly tough uh, for everyone so uh, as everyone in the panel said it has been almost 4 months that the entire business uh, scheme came to a halt even online was on hold because of the logistics issue but having said that um, among the panelists uh, i do have uh, ajay and uh, mahesh who are in sync with uh, my kind of uh, working so we are more of a offline uh, model based uh, brands and uh, our learnings would always be uh, very similar if i talk a little bit about history of woodland we started almost 25 years ago and in the last 25 years we have uh, made it um, an exclusive chain of over 600 stores so that's the biggest investment of the brand in the entire uh, scheme of things in the indian business scenario and uh, yes no doubt we were certainly hit like any other brand but uh, in the last 4 5 years we have started our uh, digital journey and that was somehow a blessing in disguise for us so if you look at uh, my business model uh, we started our own e-commerce almost 8 to 10 years back but in the last 5 years we have seen that acceleration so partnering with the uh, brands like amazon flipkart of the world and also parallelly uh, running our own uh, e-commerce platform this has given us some impetus 
uh, it's by chance that uh, last year we started working on our new website as well so that came alive right at the time when uh, covid hit everyone so we were able to give a uh, fresh look and feel of the brand to the consumers and of course a better uh, uh, consumer journey on the online business and parallel uh, omni channel was coming its way so somehow a multiplicity of things happening at the same time was a blessing in disguise and uh, this has given us an opportunity to survive in this uh, tough times when the customer has come back uh, to you again have you seen any change uh digital is certainly grown exponentially having said that uh, india is and will remain a touch and feel kind of a, a country so this will certainly come alive in the next 3 to 6 months the moment things stream uh, settle so digital as grown but touch and feel will remain relevant will of course happen? of course digital will grow uh, people have started uh, having the experience of data and they will certainly take it on the gen z and all are by default they are on digital but even the middle aged and the senior people have also come a little bit on data so there is certainly acceleration of the consumer on the data space that's correct pavush let me uh, hop across to you now you are from a category an envious category where demand is high rocketed during uh, lockdown people are the bungus amounts of content i'm not going to ask you uh, you know what has changed because uh, more and more uh, consumers are consuming content is good for uh, brands like b5 but tell me what are the challenges you've seen uh, one is of course the technology related challenges perhaps a lot of companies were not even ready to serve so much content so a lot of them have had to suddenly ramp up uh, content but ott is a space which is hyper competitive so to say last count there were some 29 or uh, or 30 or ott players in india uh, what's been the biggest challenge for ott brands during this lockdown uh so yeah i think the last count that i have is about 36 otts in india actually so yeah there you have that uh yeah i mean you're right i mean uh, the the lockdown period has been great for for all of us to grow right i mean everyone has been growing uh, uh and uh, people have been sitting home uh, and consuming a lot of content uh the biggest challenges for us uh, is how do we engage with our users how do we keep them on board and how do we make them uh, keep coming back to us with uh, 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 what people have now is a lot of choice right uh this is something that uh, people did not have a couple of years ago but now with the uh, uh with the choices increasing everyone going into uh, producing more and more content and uh having easy access to users as well because they are either uh freely accessing content or they are uh, directly coming on the platform because of partnerships with uh, your broadband connection or your mobile phone connection i think the challenge is to keep the people who come on board either uh with free content new offerings uh or with content which keeps on enthusing the users over and over again right so that is i would say uh the key challenge that everyone would face and uh competitive competitiveness is increasing so uh, a lot of people and a lot of industries would want to be the number one in in their space uh well in our space actually that might not be possible for the 30 or people that are there right so how do you ensure you build your own niche uh you keep your segment active alive and through uh, good marketing efforts and and good marketing campaigns how do you ensure you uh, keep the users who have already been acquired or have come to our platform for for whatever reason how do you keep them there so that's where the Uh, the digital strategy comes in the strategy to not only acquire users but to keep them on board uh keep bringing them back on board and uh, what all do you do from there so i think that 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 is the main thing from our side good points let me uh, now talk about uh, you know physical retail stores are opening up uh, a lot of consumers are going back to uh, uh shopping in the physical sense of the world uh, discovery is still happening online but on shop sales and sales have started and uh, post covid this entire customer jo- journey has even become even more complex in some ways uh, marrying offline and online uh, data has become one of the very key challenges for every for any marketer especially when you look at uh, data that is being generated to 
digital advertising, digital communication efforts, uh, first party data that you're generating on your own. And then there is uh, data that is coming through offline uh, retail stores. How do you marry all of these? Let me ask, uh, you know, Kishore, Kishore, uh, uh, though yours is a brand which is, which is, uh, which exists only on digital, but a lot of categories that you sell within your own group also have an offline or a kind of retail, uh, uh, retail outlet. Uh, one, I'm sure you're synchronizing somewhere at the back end, but at the same time for a marketer, uh, this entire matrix has become ex extremely complex to marry offline and online data and map the entire customer journey. So what is the, in a, in a nutshell, what is the sort of lesser complex way to do it? See, uh, uh, from our perspective, though Tata Click is uh, a completely digital channel, yes, there are a large number of Tata brands in addition to uh, non-Tata brands which actually are uh, showcased. And uh, let me take an example of uh, Trend for that matter, Westside. So Westside is exclusively on this. So a couple of things which we actually do um, in order to make sure that there is a decent amount of synchronization is to make sure that certain offers and price points which are extended on offline stores are also available. Right. Like, for example, their loyalty program. They have Club West as their loyalty program. How do we make sure that in case a customer comes and shops on Tata Click, the customer actually gets the same number of points? So those kind of synchronization is what we are trying to do. But yes, we do not have a, a, a central data repository where all these things actually happen on a complete real-time basis. So still, because these are two separate entities, these are two separate companies, things to an extent actually happen in a slightly more... Uh, of the, back-end file systems uh, processing kind of a way. But ultimately, what we try to do is, from a customer's perspective, customers should get a seamless experience. That's one part of it. Second part of it is within Tata Click itself. We want to make sure that we have a complete view of the customer across the funnel. When the customer is actually coming on board and doing the content exploration and going all the way and doing the purchase. So for that particular perspective, what we generally do is what we call full funnel approach. So we make sure that we identify a particular customer from a perspective whether a customer is actually uh, right now just exploring or a customer is wanting to uh, or seriously shop for a particular product. Those kind of signals we try and actually get it. Uh, from trend, etc., what we get is some bit of information about what kind of uh, uh, tier these customers have, but uh, generally that actually helps a role only in certain CRM campaigns, but not beyond that. Got it. Ajay, uh... Let me pick you up on this since uh, Timex has been an offline brand and now you also have online retail channel. How has been the journey to kind of go from a purely offline brand to now also doing online and then mapping both types of customers because the nature of these customers are different, these people are different, uh, preferences are naturally different. Right. So like you uh, rightly mentioned, Timex uh, traditionally been a uh, offline brand and uh, the brand presence across India, India is through different format of stores. So we are present in mom and pop stores, which are like your traditional stores, small size stores. Then we also have our own flagship stores. So we have our brand presence to flagship stores across India. But having said that, you know, the customer journey and the customer experience and the customer behavior across each format is totally different. Customer buying products in traditional formats, customers buying products online on e-commerce platform, there would be two different set of consumers. And that's kind of always intrigued me that, you know, the consumer behavior is totally different on e-commerce portal. Consumer uh, average price point in our showrooms is pretty high as compared to other channels. So there we feel that, you know, consumers who are looking to buy, you know, latest uh, trendy products, you know, flagship products and willing to pay extra for those uh, premium products. But now coming to this, that, you know, the marrying the whole set of things that offline stores, online stores. So our stores are connected through a software and we also collect off, uh, you know, collect our consumer data. And what happens through that data, we also try to market uh, our, uh, you know, uh, schemes and other uh, promotional offers to these consumers. So that data is really helping us to, you know, build our, uh, our digital journey. Uh, uh, like Vivek mentioned, uh, like Woodland, we are also we have also started our uh, digital journey recently. We have also built our brand website. But having said that, you know, in that journey, I mean, with the limited experience of our digital uh, uh, transformation, we have been trying to adopt various kind of uh, technologies and various kinds of you know facilities to enhance our customer experience. So one way is that you know we want to become a true omni platform. So when you want to really really achieve that high class uh, omni experience. For our consumers, it's very, very critical to 
you know, integrate all your stores and your uh, online data and bring that seamless experience for your consumers. So now uh, in our digital journey, we are adopting uh, these, um, you know, consumer data across uh, funnels and using it to, you know, uh, using it to communicate well and create better experience for our consumers. Right. And Vivek, uh, if I were to ask you, uh, is the other, uh, the mapping happening, happening other way around as well, where, you know, you capture some uh, sort of data digitally and then how do you map whether the customer was in the store and uh, how do you ensure that or how do you kind of you know uh, capture the customers when they are visiting the store so now uh, this would be pretty similar with uh, me and uh, ajay's team however uh, we will be a little different from uh, kishore's team because that is completely okay. data so we have a, a centralized erp which captures the entire database um, uh, of sales as well as the customer journey so we have an online model uh, and we have an offline model and there's a common database which captures both of them. Just give me a sec here. Let me bring in Christopher in the meanwhile. Christopher, uh, since you're there and as I mentioned at the start, you work Sorry. with uh, multiple categories. Uh, tell us, Christopher, uh, what are the pain points you've seen as Salesforce? You implement a lot of uh, uh, you know, CRM solutions, marketing solutions for brands. What are the pain points you've seen when it comes to integrating digital data, visibility of digital data, or data that, that is uh, generated through digital platform versus database or data that is generated through offline platforms? Yeah, it's a, it's a big challenge. And I think a lot of people have alluded to it and how hard it is to connect the data and build a unified view. Just to give you a, a, start, a starting point um, uh, for this discussion and, and then give you some specifics. Um, for companies in India, they, they said in 2020, they're using on average about 20 different data sources to build that unified view of their customer or buyer. So a data source being transactional data, point of sale data. So things that may happen offline, then you have things like email performance data, web analytics, those sort of things that happen digitally. So, you know, each of those are data sources and on average, uh, the number is 20 and it's projected to be 25 this, this year, 2021. So that's a growth of 20. Five percent. That's a massive amount of growth in building a unified view in a very short space of time, just like the uh, customer and buyer trends we were talking about at the beginning. So what do I need to solve for? What do I need to solve for to, to manage all that data and harness it? There's five key areas. There's quality, making sure the data is accurate, because what's the point of having all that data if it's inaccurate or misleading? Timeliness, am I getting the data fast enough so I'm able to react to it so it's still relevant? Because if the data has come in three month batches, that relevance, if I'm pr um, producing an offer to someone may not be relevant to where they are now, they may have already bought, et cetera. Integration, those 20 data sources or 25 projected to be this year, they could be in 20 or 25 different systems. I have to integrate that all in such a way that makes sense. Consent, we are living in a world where the customer and buyer is king more than ever. They always have been in theory, but more than ever. And legislation is also mandating, mandating that all across the world. We need to capture the consent in terms of what we're able to use, not just based on regulation, but also based on empathy, which we talked about earlier. And identity, like when we, if you're having 20 different technology stacks housing all this data, is present no while in the email system, no while in the point of sale system. So I can make sure I'm looking at the same person building that unified view when I'm personalizing a message to you subsequently in a customer journey. So these are the five areas that brands around the world are solving for and coming to technology to try and solve it for them. But there's two challenges. There's a solving for it with technology and there's solving for it internally. Because even if you have the best technology, if you don't have the workflows, the bureaucracy, the top-down mandate to solve for these things, it's not going to succeed. Yeah, I think very relevant. And uh, I think the most important part of this entire puzzle is how do you get these 25 data sources to integrate with each other? Otherwise, the effort is all kind of waste. Exactly. Deepthi, I'm going to pick you up on that. Uh, uh, thankfully, nobody buys uh, airline tickets offline anymore unless you are last minute at the airport. So for you, life is slightly simpler, uh, if, I, I, if I may use that term. But at the same time, you're still generating humongous amounts of data and you have first party data. You know, you're doing digital marketing activities, which is, which is, which is generating data for you. You have your own data sources to which, you know, you are doing uh, marketing. Then you have third party tie-ups with, for example, Vistara has a tie-up with access uh, credit cards. They are generating data. 
how do you ensure that you have these humongous uh, different data sources talking to each other and then you have a unified you know customer uh, reach out strategy in an age when everybody is talking personalization yeah so uh, this is i mean it, this is definitely challenging and as christopher said earlier that it's it's very very important to kind of put it all together to to be able to give that experience and it it has to kind of it's not just technology it, you also have to believe and 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 you also have to have that uh, philosophy um so you're right we don't have an offline kind of a kind of a system per se but we have data flowing in from many channels so we have we work with otas right which are which are our indirect channels we have our own uh, many other channels which are our website our mobile our call center etc uh, and then of course there is club vistara as you said there are co branded cards etc so we probably have it a little better than than maybe when you are combining offline and uh, online but i think we are still some time away we are also in the process of in the path of building that one view of the customer so that the same customer when comes on the website i can give a personalized experience and when calls the call center can can you know they can look at the history etc so uh, i think we we are successful up to an extent but it is still some time away uh, at the same time we do have uh, uh, you know a lot of things that that are going on social media so there are social listening tools in place as well but it is still a task to put it all together and and give a personalized or a very very customized experience at all touch points but i think that that journey has started and i think covid has also fast tracked it it was always there in our head it there was some work already done but i think because of covid it has kind of fast tracked a lot of it yes personalized personalization is the holy grail uh, absolutely we... mahesh let me come to your category which is uh, which is slightly different from some others in the sense that you know uh, very few car orders are yet placed entirely online you know people do discovery people do research search but eventually you know you you go to a store and buy so your uh, a company like maruti would have a very strong digital strategy when it ca- came to communication right uh, how are you building the next next leg of digital journey for the customer when do we start seeing people for example if not you know really booking booking a car online but pretty much you know uh, doing almost everything online and uh, the car being delivered to them okay i think uh, first of all uh, let me relate it back to uh, one of our co panelist uh, when so uh, in in our strategy uh, look uh, the feel and touch is going to remain uh, you know important aspect Uh, more so to say that uh, car is not a product which uh, we 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 buy and sort of uh, you know the life cycle is is pretty pretty long and and it needs to be served over a period of time so the physical world remains a reality with us now having said that the physical world we implement our uh, customer engagement and customer serv- serving through our dealer partners and uh, you know we, maruti is known for the network of the dealer partners but all this delivery when it happens through the dealer partners it becomes important uh, to have a synergy or a common system and platform for all the dealer partners that is one two uh, i think a uh, co panelist touched upon it that uh, we we've got many lobbies and these lobbies lines of businesses uh, they they came up over a period of time so for example of course the sales we do service we do we, we do um, driver driving training we do uh, we have a true value wherein we 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 facilitate the the old car business we provide uh, finance we we do provide loyalty program so the point here is when when we got so many lobbies and they for for a company like us which has come they have come up over a period of time it is a it, it was a challenge which we been able to overcome to a reasonable extent to stitch all these uh, uh, you know the, the customer uh, uh, interaction points into one uh, for today and also for the past and uh, when we say a customer customer uh, can have uh, a different for example mobile number when he comes to at one particular touch point he may have another mobile number he comes so i mean it is an analytical challenge to 
uh, you know, stitch it together. And we've been able to do it reasonably well. And we've actually put it into action. The second thing which becomes important is once we have it in place, uh, some reasonable amount of confidence into the single view of our customer. Of course, within the realm of uh, the, the privacy and, and the, the basic rights of the consumer about uh, their, their uh, data sharing and all that. Now uh, it comes how to uh, use it for the best interests of the consumer as well as uh, of course the company. And there it becomes important uh, to standardize on the uh, uh, interaction platforms uh, with, with the consumers at all the touch points that we have. And their Salesforce uh, came in as a partner and, and we've, we've utilized it to the, the best uh, extent possible everywhere. So when somebody calls up for a uh, customer uh, uh, concern at a call center or someone is reaching out to a dealership or buying a new car or servicing, so, so commonizing that in a you know interaction platform where a consumer uh, can be identified with the, uh, the relevant uh, uh, amount of data for him to be served better for that personalized experience. That also goes on to uh, when we want to reach out to somebody, some some consumers for our marketing initiatives, to make it uh, relevant for that uh, that consumer uh, at the right time, at the right place, uh, the right content, the right. Uh, positioning the right uh, product or service uh, offering. So all that becomes important uh, with, of course, the data analytics provisions that we are building. So, so this is the overall strategy which sort of uh, comes into play for uh, a com uh, organization of our size and complexity, uh, so to say. Yeah, I can imagine because, you know, uh, Maruti is like the FMCG equivalent of an auto company. Uh, you, are, uh, you are pretty much in every price category that a car company can be your geographical spread is uh, unmatched. Uh, so to kind of service this huge gamut of customers in an era where uh, uh, a brand a marketer wants to do personalization is a very complex task. So let us uh, tell us a little bit about how do you uh, sort of try to uh, achieve that balance because at, at some point, personalization also becomes a very costly exercise, right? How do you get all these data sources that you're generating on a daily basis to talk to each other, then create strategies to kind of individually slice customers, say across, you know, 25 TGs or 40 TGs and then go to them? Yeah, very, very, you know, relevant question for this discussion. Yes, actually, well, first thing is start from defining very crisp KPIs uh, for the resultant KPIs. And analytics uh, and our internal analytics provis comes very handy. And, and we, we have an analytics uh, you know, a group being uh, groomed over the past three years. And now in every stream of business, whether, whether we are trying to pitch in a new product to our existing customers, or we are trying to reach out uh, 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 with respect to, uh, you know, let's say we want to call out to some people you know, coming for servicing their cars, we are, able to reasonably uh, bring, uh, uh, bring out the cohorts, uh, which, uh, so, so it starts from, you know, cohort-based uh, treatment of the customers and slowly we refine it and we intend to uh, make those cohorts small, smaller enough uh, to, uh, you know, bring, bring uh, incremental value. But yes, of course, within the, the realm of uh, the law of diminishing returns, as you were saying that, you know, where is the fine balance where the costs actually or you know start becoming um, higher than the results so it's, it's a fine balance and it's the it's the statistics and mathematics uh, which uh, we have to plan then the possibilities are enormous and once we have it in house uh, that uh, incremental knowledge and incremental uh, experimentation uh, comes in very handy yeah absolutely christopher let me hop across to you because uh, you have a very good sort of uh, ringside view of having worked with multiple brands and industries, what are, this, uh, what are the flip side of this, uh, you know, race towards personalization? Uh, what are the challenges you've seen that companies have not been able to overcome and where do they falter? Yeah, the, it, it's a very good question because, and, and it was sort of alluded to it and lots of different individual examples of, of, of the challenge of interaction, one, because of the change, um, but two, because of the nature of the product or service that's being provided. Um, there is a trust crisis. Uh, generally speaking, customers and, and business buyers across the world are distrustful of brands. Um, and there's fundamental reasons why they're distrustful because of macro examples that we all hear about in the news. Yeah. 
and especially coming in through my industry and technology. And, and we're all aware of those examples. That's something we all have to overcome. We have to overcome that trust crisis if we want to then go and have the opportunity to then go offer our product or service or just have a general conversation with those we view in our addressable market. So that's the unique uh, thing people are doing. They have access to all this data in such a way that they've never had before. They have the ability through technology to personalize in ways they've never had before across an array of channels, reaching people at their most intimate moments. But the end customer is more distrustful than they ever have been of those same brands. So this is a, some, the, the way that we've generally seen people be successful at this is basically doing things in such a way that have a humanistic approach. Yes, first know your customer, but when you then go to the next stage, it's humanizing the approach of the marketing that you don't do or the communication you do or the customer service interaction that you do. And I'll give you two simple examples that, that sort of make sense given an end customer. And I'm sure we all feel this as end customers. When you have a customer service interaction with somebody and somebody's raising an issue with your company, maybe there's been an issue, there's been a cancellation, the product hasn't arrived, the service wasn't up to standard. What is the last thing you want to do with that customer at this point in time? the last thing you should be doing is marketing to them. They have an open customer service issue. You need to rectify that issue. They should be blocked from all forms of marketing until that issue is resolved. And then you can start marketing it to them. Right now, only about half of companies have the ability to do that around the world. I don't know the exact number for India off the top of my head, but around the world, it's about half com of companies. They don't do it all the time. They just have the ability to do it and doing it sometimes. That should be 100% all the time in every industry. And in reverse, if you want to be truly be effective, when that customer service interaction is happening, when you have that chance to connect with a customer directly, shouldn't that customer service agent, whether it's live chat, group messaging over the phone or in person, shouldn't that customer service agent be empowered with the ability to market to somebody? You have the opportunity to talk to somebody. Shouldn't I know what that person's interacted with in my console? Have they seen and interacted with this email offer? What was the last product that they bought? Because in that moment, you have a unique opportunity to market to that somebody that a marketer would, you know, ultimately kill for, you know, to use an expression. They would love to have that level of personalization in that moment to have that conversation. So these are the types of simple things that people can do to establish trust. One, by not annoying somebody when they're most annoyed with you and two by connecting with them in that moment where they're willing to connect with you because they've reached out because of an issue yeah i think very very relevant points mm. you know some of these are very fundamental to marketing approach but uh, in our race for uh, you know uh, personalization and uh, gathering all these data sources we end up kind of missing uh, some of these issues the important point for a lot of marketers to also remember is that Customers, uh, in a sense, find brands boring, right? They they want products. They don't. They want products or services, right? Brands are creations of the companies, and uh, how do you humanize boring brands? That's the challenge for marketers. How do brands talk to customers and create aspirational value? I think that's the most important uh, thing for marketers to do. We have uh, limited time now. Let me uh, uh, let me quickly uh, take up the issue of. Uh, creating, uh, you know, contextualized reach uh, to customers. And, uh, you know, I talk about contextualized advertising, marketing campaigns. We've seen what uh, the pandemic has done last year to, you know, economies across the world, large parts of populations uh, in uh, almost every country is very deeply impacted. Having said that, the realities of business have not changed. Shareholders still seek, you know, quarterly returns. Uh, almost every industry continues to remain highly competitive. In an era like that, how do brands take a human approach towards marketing at the same time, uh, maintain their competitive edge? Otherwise, you are at the peril of all sounding the same. If everybody you know, started doing you know, COVID-focused campaign, all 10 brands in a category would sound very similar, right? So how do you uh, sort of uh, walk that thin line. Uh, Vivek, uh, if you have any thoughts on that. I'm sorry, I was not able to hear you well. We'll have to repeat the last So one. I said, uh, you know, COVID uh, has done uh, very huge damage to economies. Customers have lesser money. At the same time, Woodland shareholders would next year want, you know, things getting back to normal. 
more returns so how do you balance that uh, you know trade off between aggressively reaching out to customers when you are also competing with 10 other brands in your category at the same time also having a very human approach because you know you don't love the last thing you want is all 10 brands in your category sounding very similar to the customer and the aspiration value disappearing overnight so if you look at the woodland uh, loyalist they uh, remain there and they uh, uh, intend to grow further uh, in terms of our marketing budgets if i say broadly they remain almost in the same space so it's a matter of optimization of a marketing campaigns uh, which were uh, a little skewed towards the traditional earlier and which are skewed towards the digital now so there's a shift in the marketing optimization strategies that we have been doing and uh, that is certainly which has uh, given us an opportunity to come back uh, on track to a certain extent if i look at my current scenario i'm uh, probably um, back on uh, at least 60 to 70 percent revival that has happened in the last three months and uh, typical to my brand uh, this being a winter season uh, which is certainly uh, in a very good shape so while as a as a human we all uh, love winter only to a certain extent for my product line uh, winter is something which i sell the most in terms of my apparel and all so uh, a multiple mix and match of my product line uh, uh, economic scenario uh, and all those things have got us uh, a little bit back on the track we intend to uh, take this forward so data analysis certainly that has uh, made shape already proved itself so that will uh, be on a longer journey for sure and uh, let's see how things shape up uh, in the next uh, financial year deepthi again very relevant for your industry airlines uh, you know at the heart of it uh it is about going from point a to point b you want larger share of the market in an era when you know people have lesser money how do you find that balance so um i would say that it's very very important at this time to create the brand connect it's extremely important to uh you know create that emotional connect with the customer and not to be in the face so as i said earlier the the um priority in terms of travel change from not just pricing and timing but also to safety how how an airline will kind of take care of me what will happen inside the aircraft etc so it was important to create to communicate and create that brand connect that we are going to take care of you you are safe so there was a campaign that we launched and it was across three uh, you know all all other all our platforms um and it was all about flying feel safe again when we started when when we were not flying for about two and a half months when we started flying it was in a very limited way we knew that pricing is going to is you know we, there is a capping on the pricing by the government so what's going to you know what's going to play on customers mind it is not really the price it's the confidence that we have to build so you you have to have that connect and that is what we are going to that is how we are going to get the customer back so today as a brand i mean there are many airlines right as a brand if i'm able to build that trust and get the customer back to fly with vistara then you know we then that's how you build over it and that's how you see the growth because at the end of the day as you said it is the revenue that matters so how do you go about it how do you communicate and we used various i mean we used the social media we used other uh, other properties at the airport to ensure that these are some of the things that you know we will be doing apart from that it was important for the customer to know what are the quarantine rules what are the uh, policies because it was very dynamic right everything was changing and it was important for us to kind of communicate that so we kept doing that along with talking about how safe you are and also if you see many many um, uh, uh, you know uh, many many interactions on twitter and on social media about how people are either appreciating uh, you know how the ground services or the crew has helped uh, people uh, you know because it's the in an airline it's an experience of the product and the service so and we reciprocated it via uh, creating a property called vistara love so saying that thank you you know uh, thank you for appreciating us so those kind of connects you build uh, you know to kind of ensure that you are humanizing the uh, experience and creating an emotional connect so that you ensure repeat or you ensure more and more customer choosing vistara as a brand ajay what would be the challenge for a category like you i mean you want higher market share higher share of wallet but it's almost kind of inhuman to aggressively pursue it uh, in these times so how would you approach that 
Right. So uh, in our scenario, again, the personalization is very, very important. Like I mentioned initially, uh, that you know the way we looked at the consumers has completely changed after this COVID situation. Uh, how consumers behave on different platform, uh, the 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 interaction with the product is totally different. And as a result of that, you know, during COVID situation, we also build uh, cohorts of our consumers across uh, different products. So we have a you know a product lineup of let's say about more than thousand SKUs. And within those thousand SKUs, it's very difficult to build cohorts. But you know, uh, when we looked at the data, uh, we realized that you know there are different set of consumers who are looking at functional watches. And there are some set of consumers who are looking at very, very trendy flagship expensive watches, some watch collectors items, and there are consumers who are looking to uh, gain offers on these kind of products. So uh, we have seen interesting transition of our consumers happening on digital platform. Uh, one interesting, um, you know, uh, example, like, you know, during the COVID time, when we had our stores uh, closed and uh, there was nothing moving in our traditional stores or also completely locked down. So in order to just gauge the consumer sentiments, we launched a campaign, digital campaign on uh, on digital platform saying that, you know, you place your order in advance. And that was something unique, which we did for the first time, just to just to check how the consumers are, you know, ready. We had the data of consumers who are looking to buy expensive limited edition timepieces. And we targeted those consumers just to check, you know, whether they are willing to pay in advance and whether to wait for the lockdown restriction and all. And as a result of that, what we saw a deluge of uh, orders coming to our website. And as a matter of fact, it also sensitized our trade partners and they also kind of uh, felt absolutely motivated that, you know, uh, the things will be positive soon and consumers are ready to buy watches and they are ready to buy products. They will be back to normal things. So again, using the data and creating that personalized experience during that uh, COVID time, targeting special set of consumers who have aspiration to buy your, uh, you know, uh, expensive watches, limited edition timepieces, kind of gave us again this, this, this great understanding of creating personalized experience and um, looking at how the consumers interact with your communication and with your product categories. Fair enough. Mahesh, what would you do? How would you get 20 lakh rupees out of a guy whose income has been badly hit without kind of aggressively selling it? So I think... Uh... Uh, in our case, it's it's not uh, you know the scenario that we can get somebody to, but yes, uh, there are offerings. For example, uh, uh, there are things like subscription models and those kind of things which, which yeah, I think that's are been a kind of, kind of yeah. Uh, sure, it was the it. worst even before COVID, but you kind of yeah yeah, yeah. So, so so th th those are the kind of things, and plus I think it is also uh, that consultative approach at the point of sales and and. Uh, throughout uh, uh, which uh, because it's ultimately uh, uh, for us it's not only one time product sale it is also uh, the, the the lifetime uh, 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 revenues that the customer brings to us across the uh, you know overall lifespan of the product and of course the repeat purchases so um, uh, you know that is how that is our take on that and it's it's not a short term strategy for us uh, i mean it never works uh, for our kind of industry. One can assume no over-the-top usage of stars for some time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I think I think the subscription-driven uh, strategy is a fantastic example of uh, good quality consumer insight uh, coupled with uh, you know insight into what's happening with incomes during COVID, and uh, only time will tell how uh, how uh, successful it is commercially. But on the face of it, it looks like a you know, kind of very interesting thing to do at this point of time. We are almost out of time, so let me uh, uh, come uh, come to each one of you for your closing comments. Uh, one of the key uh, uh, components uh, that CXOs kind of uh, aim to achieve today is real-time engagement with customers. Real-time engagement is also a huge challenge uh, because as we have discussed multiple things during this last one hour, uh, Christopher said Indian companies are dealing with 20 different data sources going on to 25. Personalization as a piece is not yet in place. It's really complex. Your offline and online uh, data sources, again, are you know, not yet fully integrated. How do you, uh, do, uh, how do you approach real-time engagement in a, in a, in a complex met matrix like this? Mahesh, since we are with you, perhaps you can talk about it. Yeah, I think it's very important. One of my panelists already spoke about that human face uh, of, of a brand, uh, of a company, company that becomes very important. So 
uh, when we talk about uh, this aspect, it becomes important to have a, you know a common platform of uh, interaction uh, with people and uh, keeping uh, you know a view of the customer overall what he has done with us what he is going to what are his preferences overall and statistically one can build upon what are the medium somebody prefers to talk with what what are the times probably he will be most uh, you know another thing is that you know in today's world when uh, you know it becomes very easy to get uh, barge into anybody's privacy uh, it's very important to be relevant uh, and to live up to the uh, you know uh, expectations from the brand it's very important for uh, big brands like us uh, we are not like you know someone who can uh, annoy the customer and and you know if someone for example uh, uh, gets too much uh, feels too much his privacy is getting impacted by the emails i am sending to him probably he'll just check me off and then that opportunity is gone so we need to be very careful uh, on, in the strategies that we follow uh, in the coming times with respect to this fair enough paulus there's a audience question for you i'm going to take that up uh, how is z5 creating personalization across global markets oh yeah uh, so yeah personalization uh, is something that we uh, are very focused on uh, and what are the uh, what are the pointers i think deepthi and and mahesh have also kind of picked up it's it's something that is very relevant from an online uh, uh, online world right so right from uh, bucketing and cohorting users from uh, the time they come on our platform to how much time they are engaging with us to what geography uh, uh, they are coming from what language they are watching the content on uh, all the way back to when was the last time they kind of uh, engaged with us and what was it that they engaged with us with and then hitting them back with communication of what new content we have what new offers we have on our platform so uh, personalization is the only way of uh, distinguishing ourselves uh, uh, and the customers that we have on our platform on uh, on everyday basis uh, for, for is is what we do actually right so uh, it becomes very important and uh, like christopher actually already mentioned right so because our data uh, and and it's true for us as well and i think it will be true for almost everyone uh be it an indian company or non indian company our data lies in multiple different uh, uh channels different uh, different pieces and we have to segment that get to the bottom of it uh, get to the bottom of that and then hit back the users on a completely different channel so those are the challenges that we face uh, prioritizing all those things uh, and then reaching out to users i think that's 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 the that's the game for us actually Christopher, if I can get your closing thoughts, what are the three things you think CMOs will be kept busy with this year? I think. Uh, I think on, oh, sorry. No, I'm, I'm sorry. You want to finish your thought? No, it's okay. You can. You can cut me some. Okay. No, no problem. No problem at all. The era of Zoom. This is exactly what we need to be uh, wary of. Um, the the thing is to keep track of what's going on, right? And I'll give you a sort of a simple example of how quickly things can change based on on the ground conditions. Uh, in month three of the of the pandemic, the number one thing customers said they wanted to see from brands was how they were taking care of their own employees and what operational updates were going, i.e. change of service, hours may have reduced, the way I'm delivering a product or service. Only two months later, the, the brands wanted uh, them to focus back on their products and services again and promotional offers. Now, think about what's got happening this year, right? We've got global vaccinations being rolled out, new regulations, things like cross-border travel uh, may start opening up in new ways. You may have things like vaccine passports. So there'll be the whole host of other things that occur this year that change the way that you know customers look and feel and then the way they want to interact with any given brand. These are the things all of us have to be on top of, right? We don't exactly know what they are. We know it at a macro level, um, but we don't exactly know what they are. We just have to be adept at keeping on track of what those trends are, what changing sentiments may be going on. Of course, regulatory things going on in our industry and at the government level, and then act accordingly in terms of how we then go and communicate. Now, so there's no specific one thing to do, but you need to have the mechanisms to capture those insights either directly or with people you from people you trust 
and then be able to deliver that out in terms of output back to the, the customers and buyers that you service. So being agile and being adept is critical during this time and then having the technology and workflows to deliver what it is you want to do in terms of your strategy. Because I think, you know, as we've all learned through the past 12 months, we don't exactly know what's going to happen. And we not only do we not know what's going to happen, we don't know how people are going to react to what's going to happen, even if we know what's going to happen. <laughs> so being adept and agile to adapt accordingly, and then, you know, move through the year as things happen uh, through the technology and workflows that we have. Well, I think COVID has made one thing clear, which is the fragility of all the plans you make. And I think that's a good yes. thing to give to your bosses. Uh, Deepthi, I'm going to come to you. Uh, there's a question from uh, Nikhil Deshmukh for you. By, by when do you think passenger football will reach pre-COVID level? Yeah, hi, Nikhil. Uh, well, I think a, um, a lot depends on how and uh, how the international borders open up, uh, how the government mandate comes across. But uh, uh, I think we get a good sense that it will take about six more months for it to kind of completely come back to pre-COVID level. Uh, with the vaccine coming in, uh, and and hopefully you know uh, more and more people will get uh, uh, the vaccine shot and travel will open up. But yeah, it is uh, again international may take some more time. Domestic is already kind of getting there, so maybe another six months. Fair enough, Ajay. Uh, what are the things that will keep you busy? So now uh, we realize that you know digital is very very important for us, and now working on our a yearly calendar, a lot of new activities being planned uh, to, you know, uh, to fast track this uh, digital transformation within the company, uh, new softwares, new investments, and uh, new strategies and new ways are being looked at. So presently, uh, very, very occupied with, uh, you know, taking this uh, challenge of, uh, uh, you know, managing the digital transformation uh, within the company. So that's one thing which is which is keeping me busy these days. Will that also mean significantly reduced uh, emphasis on offline store, or will that expansion continue at pre-COVID levels? So our uh, you know uh, offline uh, uh, focus will remain same, and uh, we we know that you know the touch and feel is very very important, and it's a beautiful way to showcase your products to the consumers. The way you know consumers yeah. would like to interact with the uh, with your with your sales. Uh, people in the store and the way they like to feel the product. But yes, digital transformation is to reach out to the new and new set of consumers in uh, smaller cities where we don't have that much of penetration through our uh, flagship stores and where we are not able to showcase our entire width of catalogs. So maybe, you know, a two way, two pronged approach. One is to, you know, uh, catch new and new consumers. And second is to, when you catch your new consumers, your, your own set of uh, data, the way you interact with the consumers to create a very unique, uh, consumer experience. That's very important for us uh, going forward. Understood. Vivek, I see you nodding. Are there I completely, any... I completely agree to Ajay. Are there any different ways in which you are going to now engage with the next guy who walks into your store, the next outdoor enthusiast? No, our working would be very similar to what Ajay uh, recommended. Uh, we being an exclusive uh, retail chain of 600 stores, we intend to uh, make it grow further. And uh, that is our uh, strongest asset. Fantastic. Kishore, your parting thoughts. In fact, uh, the, for us, uh, because being a digital platform, we actually generate tons and tons of data. So one of the most important thing is knowing very clearly that every customer who comes on the platform does not want to shop. The intent for shopping may not be that high. How do we actually build relevant experiences, build relevant experiences for customers who are not actually just browsing? And how do we build relevant experiences for customers who actually have a very, very serious intent to shop a particular category? So making sure that making sense of that particular data and build ecosystem that actually automate these kind of customer experiences is one of the most important focus here. Fantastic. Fair point and a lot of uh, wealth of information uh, that you've all shared. Uh, we are out of time. So uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Deepthi. Thank you, gentlemen for a very insightful, engaging session. Thank you. Uh, session. If there are any more audience questions uh, that come by, we'll be happy to pass them on to you. Till the time we meet again, thank you, goodbye, and stay safe. Thank you so much. Thank you.